For those of you that have listened to the podcast for a long time, you know of my connection to the Lady of the Dunes murder case on Cape Cod. The book that I worked on searching for the Lady of the Dunes that went hand in hand with Frank Durant's Lady of the Dunes documentary. For nearly 50 years, it was an unsolved cold case with seemingly no end in sight. But thanks to the documentary and to a very small extent the book, a fire was lit under authorities. And on Halloween Day 2022, the Lady of the Dunes was identified as Ruth Marie Terry from Whitwell, Tennessee. And just several weeks ago, the case was officially closed with her husband Guy Moldovan being identified as her killer. I'm positive there were accomplices, but I think the authorities are wiping their hands of the rest of this, saying it's all done. She got her name back. We've got a killer. Maybe not all the people involved, but it's good enough. In my work on the Searching for the Lady of the Dunes book, I was privy to a series of letters sent to Frank by convicted serial killer Haddon Clark. He's currently serving life in prison in Maryland for two known murders. But Haddon Clark, he was diagnosed as paranoid schizophrenic. He's also someone that constantly, desperately clings to relevance in whatever sick fame he has. This means that he has claimed to murder other people, including at times saying the Lady of the Dunes. I transcribed all of his correspondence with Frank into the Searching for the Lady of the Dunes book. And it's mostly rinse and repeat rambling weirdness where some of the letters have the same exact verbiage in them. But it was the last letter and the last paragraph really of that letter that really caught my attention and is really relevant today. In this last paragraph, Haddon Clark unprompted brought up the fact that he used to work at a place called Camp Wellmet in a town, Narrowsburg, New York, in the early 1970s. It was at this Camp Wellmet that he claims to have known a young girl named Bonnie Bickwit. And Haddon Clark mentions that he thinks he may have been one of the last people to see Bonnie alive before she and her boyfriend, Mitchell Weiser, disappeared in 1973. This immediately raised my antenna, and I reached out to Frank and told him about it. He had totally glossed over it because he was burned out from the Lady of the Dunes documentary, and he was moving on to his next project. For me, I reached out to the Sullivan County Sheriff's Department in New York with this information from Haddon Clark, and I also reached out to a man named Stuart Carton, who runs the MitchellandBonnie.com website. He was a friend of Mitchell's. And he and the family of both of them have been running this website to try to solve the case and to try to keep their memories alive. Because this is the longest missing teens case in America. Stewart got right back to me as far as Haddon Clark went. The Sullivan County Sheriff's Department has never responded to me, which due to recent events makes more sense now. Mitchell and Bonnie, they disappeared on July 27th, 1973. They were high school sweethearts with Bonnie, yes, working at Camp Wellmet in Narrowsburg. Mitchell was a photographer's assistant in Brooklyn. And the couple planned to hitchhike to the concert festival known as Summer Jam. It was headlined by the Allman Brothers and the Grateful Dead in Watkins Glen, New York. The concert is believed to be the largest ever attended, with more than 600,000 people showing up. Mitchell met Bonnie at Camp Wellmet, and they set off for the concert, which was 156 miles from Narrowsburg to Watkins Glen. It was believed at the time that the couple had about $25 in between them. They had backpacks, sleeping bags, and a cardboard sign that read Watkins Glen. They were last seen hitchhiking along State Route 97, and they've never been seen since. For me, after the beginning of last year, 2022, my involvement in this went cold. I told Stuart that I didn't know much more about Haddon Clark besides what he had written in that letter, and obviously the Sheriff's Department never got back to me. Time went by, we flash forward to August of this year. I'm making plans for the true crime segments for the podcast for October. And I said, I want to talk about 
Mitchell and Bonnie because it's the 50th anniversary and they've never been seen again. I type their names into a Google search and up pops an article from Rolling Stone magazine from August 2023, something brand new. I will link to the article in the description of the podcast, but to sum it up, A man named Eric Greenberg wrote an article about the case of Mitchell Weiser and Bonnie Bickwit in conjunction with the Summer Jam concert and the 50th anniversary. Eric Greenberg is only a few degrees of separation from the case as Mitchell Weiser would have been in his high school class. So he has a connection to this. There was the initial article about Summer Jam and about Bonnie and Mitchell and what happened to them. Then there was a follow-up article that said the New York governor ordered the police to look into the missing teens cold case after the first Rolling Stone article. So I was blown away by this, and I reached out to Stewart again with my same information, but saying that I read the article. And doing my due diligence, I reached out to the Sullivan County Sheriff's Department again as well. Stewart forwarded my information to Eric Greenberg, and suddenly there I was, sitting in the parking lot of the bike trail near where I work, chatting with this Rolling Stone magazine reporter. What I found is the case of Bonnie and Mitchell, though not the same, gives me Lady of the Dunes vibes. And not just because Haddon Clark is kind of a through line. He was considered a suspect in 2000. But his big thing was he wanted to be let out of jail to help the police find where Mitchell and Bonnie were. And that ended up not happening. But in speaking with Eric Greenberg, I found him to remind me of Frank Durant so much. And I mean that as a huge compliment to both of them. Because both of these men just want resolution to the case for the people involved. What I found in talking with Eric and Frank, it's the topic of malfeasance, which basically means that the authorities involved, they messed up, but not intentionally. It was more incompetence. In the case of Mitchell and Bonnie, the authorities told the families that, oh, they're probably just hippie runaways. We're not going to go look for them. Amazingly, there was an online petition after the first Rolling Stone article to make the authorities reopen this case and put more effort into it. In speaking with Eric, he doesn't think Haddon Clark was involved. I don't think he was either. I think he's someone that's looking to cling on to whatever weird fame he has. But I did find it interesting that he unprompted mentioned Bonnie Bickwit in a letter to Frank about the Lady of the Dunes, which it's just weird. It's sad because so much time was lost in even starting an investigation for where Mitchell and Bonnie were. At the time, the NYPD assured Mitchell's father that it would alert police agencies across the state about his son's disappearance, and they never did. So Sullivan County, they never even started an investigation. And when Mitchell's father complained about this, he was treated poorly by the police. And this left the families on their own. Missing persons cases in the early 1970s were far different than they are now. The families had to do all the legwork, distributing thousands of flyers and placing ads, hiring their own private detectives, visiting and contacting hippie communes, even cult groups to see if Mitchell and Bonnie had been indoctrinated like that. And eventually the case just faded away. And it's really so sad because it's 50 years. There are still family and friends that hold out hope, at least for some kind of resolution. It is highly unlikely that Bonnie and Mitchell are still alive, that they ran away for 50 years and never contacted any of their family and friends. The Rolling Stone article talks about an orange Volkswagen bus with Pennsylvania license plates with an eyewitness claiming that he saw two teens get swept away in the Susquehanna River. But this eyewitness never made a call about the incident, thinking that the driver of this Volkswagen bus would make the call. The big problem with this potential part of the story of Bonnie and Mitchell being swept away in the river is that no bodies have ever been found. And I'm glossing over a lot of this because the articles that Eric Greenberg wrote are really in-depth and really do more justice to this case than I'm able to. But there's momentum now. 
in speaking with Eric. He's got that same drive and desire that Frank had for the Lady of the Dunes case, and we know how that ended up. And who knows, maybe by some weird coincidence, Bonnie and Mitchell are still alive. They'd only be 66 and 65, respectively. But these two teenagers hiked out on their way to one of the biggest concerts ever, and they never made it. And authorities thought of them as just hippie runaways and never even started an investigation, leaving everything up to the family and friends of these two. It is now the longest missing teens case in America. And even if Haddon Clark had nothing to do with it, it has still drawn me into this case and my interest into this case. So I will link to both of the Rolling Stone articles in the description of the podcast. I will also link to MitchellandBonnie.com. Please check out all of those links. If you have any information, I'd reach out to MitchellandBonnie.com. Stuart is amazing at getting back to you. The authorities, Sullivan County, I've reached out to them several times and have never heard back. But if any of you out there have any information about the disappearance of Bonnie Bickwit and Mitchell Weiser, please reach out and let's try to get some kind of conclusion for the family and friends that have been dealing with this for 50 years.